Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to deal with RL circuits. Oh, let me start it over again. Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another application of inductance. In this case, we're going to look at an RL circuit. And an RL circuit is a circuit that has a resistor and an inductor in it. So let's draw an inductor circuit like this. So let's say we have a battery connected to a resistor connected to an inductor and the symbol for an inductor is something that looks like that looks kind of like a coil and then we're going to add a switch to it there we go all right in our particular example it says that we have a 50 volt battery that's connected in series with a 0.25 henry inductor and a 20 ohm resistor as well as a switch initially in an open position there we go Let's uh, plug in the numbers that we have. So the voltage here is equal to 50 volts. The uh, resistance here uh, equal to 20 ohms. The inductance here, L equal to 2.5 Henry's and the open switch. Now, they're asking for A, how long after the switch is closed will the current reach 99% of its maximum value? B, what will the current be after 0.1 seconds and C, what will the voltage drop across the inductor be after 0.2 seconds? All right, let's start with part A. We want to know how long it takes for the, for the current to reach 99% of its maximum value. Well, after we close the switch at T equals zero, what an inductor does, it prevents a current change. So if the inductor wasn't there, there was simply a circuit there with a resistor, the moment we close the switch, current will instantly begin to flow through the circuit. But the inductor holds back that initial surge of the current. And so it takes a while for the current to reach its maximum value. Well, there's a time constant associated with this. The time constant, in this case, is equal to L over R. You can see that the bigger the inductor, the longer the time constant is, the more the inductor will hold back the surging current and of course the larger the resistance is the smaller the time constant because a larger resistor means that the end current will be relatively small because remember Ohm's law that current is equal to V over R so if you have a large R you'll have a, a, a very small final current and then the time constant won't be as long so in this particular case the time constant is L which is 2.5 Henry's divided by resistance which is 20 ohms and that is equal to 0 0.125 seconds about an, an eighth of a second that's the time constant just like with capacitors the time that it takes for the current to reach 99 percent of its final value that takes five time constants so for part a the time equal to five time constants is the time that it takes for the current to reach nearly its maximum value so in this case this is equal to five times 0 0.125 seconds and so that would be equal to 0 0.625 seconds so that's the easy part it takes a little bit over half second for the current to reach pretty well its maximum value the next part is a little bit more difficult now we're find, now we're supposed to find the current after one second or not one second but 0.1 seconds so for that we need the equation so remember that just like with capacitors when inductors are in a circuit the current will not immediately go to its final value if this is the final value of the current then the current will increase just like that just like the increase of a charging capacitor and the equation for that we can say for part b the equation we need is the um, the current as a function of time is equal to the final current in the circuit times one minus e to the minus t over tau where tau of course is the time constant of the circuit the final current of the circuit can be found by using ohm's law so we can say that uh, i final is simply equal to the voltage applied to the circuit which in this case is the volt divided by the resistance of the circuit which is r so we can actually replace i final by the voltage in the circuit divided by the resistance in the circuit so we can write it like that you can say this is equal to um, v over r times one minus e to the minus t over tau okay so now we want to evaluate that for the time being equal to 0.1 second 0.1 second is just slightly less than one time constant so I 
when t is equal to 0.1 seconds is equal to the V final over R. So V is 50 volts divided by the resistance of 20 ohms times 1 minus E to the T over tau. So T divided by 0.125. And that would be seconds, right? If you want to put the units in, that's seconds. And 1 divided by 0.125 seconds is like 8T. So I can rewrite this as uh, that would be 2.5 amps times 1 minus e to the minus 8t. All right. Now, plug it in the value for t equals 0 0.1 seconds. We say this is equal to um, 2.5 amps times 1 minus e to the minus 8 times 0 0.1 seconds. Let me finish this here with parentheses. Now we grab our calculator. Here we go, and let's plug these values in. So we got 0.8 negative. We raise that to the exponent, and then we subtract that from 1. And then we multiply that times 2.5, but let me plug in what we have so far. That's 2.5 amps times 0.55. And so when we multiply that times 2.5, what do we get? We get 1.38 amps. So that means that the current, when time is equal to 0.1 seconds, is now equal to 1.38 amps. The second part, or now the third part of the problem, so we found our first part of the problem, we found that after 0.625 seconds, pretty well, the current is at its maximum strength. Here, after 0.1 seconds, the current is at 1.38 amps. The final current will be 2.5 amps. That happens after five time constants. But now for part C, we're supposed to find the voltage drop across the inductor after 0.2 seconds. So for part C, and let me put a line here. So that's my remaining board space. Not a lot, but let's see if it works. So C, what we're trying to find is the voltage across the inductor is equal to question mark when t is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. So there's different ways in which we can do that. The simplest way would be to use, uh, let's say, Kirchhoff's rules and go around the circuit and say the voltage drop or the, the sum of the voltages around the circuit should add up to zero. So starting at any given point and then first going across the battery, we can say that um, using Kirchhoff's Lou, uh, rules, that the voltage across the battery plus the voltage drop across the resistance, that would be a negative, right, negative voltage drop, that would be minus I times R, minus I times R, and then the voltage drop across the inductor, and the voltage drop across the inductor is L times the change in the current. So minus uh, L times DI dt, and that equals to zero. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the voltage drop across the inductor, which is the L DI dt. So what we could do is we could simply take the equation of the current, take the derivative of that, and then evaluate that at t equals 0.2 seconds. Or, if we're smart about it, we can solve that equation for the quantity L di dt in terms of the voltage and the voltage drop across the resistor. So let's do that instead. We're going to solve this equation for L di dt by moving to the other side and turning the equation around. So we can say that L di dt which in essence is the voltage drop across the inductor, that is going to be equal to, on the other side, we have the volt from the battery minus the voltage drop across the resistor. So to find the voltage drop across the resistor, we must know the current at that time, which means we have to solve for the current at 0.2 seconds, which is kind of what we have here when we solve the current for 0.1 seconds. So let's now find the current at 0.2 seconds, which means we're going to take the very same equation here, but instead of 0.1, plug in 0.2. So as a quick sidestep, we can say that the current, when t is equal to 0.2 seconds, is equal to what we had before, which is 2.5 amps, which is the final current when the, when the inductor no longer poses the change in the current, times 1 minus e, to the minus 8 times 0.2 seconds. And that will give us the current that we can plug in here because we want to find out what the voltage drop across the resistor is at that moment in time. All right, plugging that into the calculator, we have, uh, that would be 
0.2 times 8, which is minus 1.6, 1.6 minus, use as the exponent of E. So that gives us 2.5 amps times, oh, then we have to subtract that from 1. That's better. So we have 2.5 amps times 0 0.2. 798. So multiply times 2.5, and that gives us almost exactly 2 amps. Close enough. We'll just run it off to 2 amps. All right, so now we know the current at t equals to 2 seconds, which means we can now find the voltage drop across the inductor at 0.2 seconds. So L di dt when time equals 0.2 seconds is equal to the voltage from the battery, which is 50 volts, minus the voltage drop across the resistor at time equals 0.2 seconds, which is 2 amps times 20 ohms. And then you can see, of course, that is equal to 50 volts minus 40 volts, which means after 0.2 seconds, the voltage drop across the resistor is 40 volts, subtract that from the 50 volts, you're left with 10 volts across the inductor, so the answer is this is equal to 10 volts, so the LDIDT, when the time is equal to 0 0.2 seconds, is equal to 10 volts, and that's how you do that.